Good morning, TGIF. We made it to Friday. It was a short week, but it was all compressed into four days, which makes it harder. So we made it. Just one more day to get through to the weekend. If you're tired, congratulations for putting your work. You don't need to worry about anything. Hi, my name is Tiki. I'm a bookie monster. I'm a bookie monster. I love books, reading, and everything associated with that. It is Friday, September the 8th. Welcome. If you're new, welcome back. If you're returning, I appreciate you so much. This is a live show, but you can certainly watch this on replay when you have gotten some more coffee in you, slept in a little bit more. I'm just a morning person, so this is when I do this. Let's jump into some new releases. That's what we do. We look at the uh, new releases that are listed to be set out into the wild this week. Um, so let's go to, let me turn this off. Isn't that pretty? Oh, ready for fall. Found a new website that is letting us get some other listings that weren't necessarily covered in the um, other website. The other site I've always said is not comprehensive, but we also want to know everything that's out there. Uh, we did not get to this one. This is called in the romance. So we're going to look at the romance tab first here. Got it. Got it. Champion by Michelle Mencken. It is a Kindle Unlimited. The winningest, not to mention most arrogant quarterback in football history, Champion Valentine. Oh, he had no choice in life and shame on the author. Gets what he wants, when and how he wants it, except when it involves a certain exotic dancer. Electra Miller's life is, Champion and Electra, is the opposite of Charmed. One terrible, tragic night, she lost everything that meant anything to her. Forced to abandon her dream, she works hard as the headliner at Fantasy. Stripping is a Juilliard, but it pays the rent, and no one there asks uncomfortable questions about her past. Her secrets remain her own, even her crush on the blonde, blue-eyed, and gorgeous Texas Lone Stars quarterback. Champion wants Electra. Electra wants Champion just as badly, though she can never admit it. The secrets she keeps aren't only her own. What happens when a living legend who doesn't know how to take no for an answer meets a beautiful dancer 18 years younger than him who just can't tell him yes? You guessed it. Game on. One with an outcome that might change everything and not just for the two of them. And this, I would imagine, is very spicy. And that's okay. There is no judgment here. And I don't think we saw this one. This one doesn't sound familiar. Music within your heart by Isaac Samuel Miller. This actually came out in August, it says. I know we did those other two in the middle. This one's new. I'm familiar with the name. I have not read any of this person's books. Uh, this is called Darius by J.R. Ward. Darius, son of Mark Long, isn't looking for love the night destiny comes to claim him. He's also not interested in crashing his new car. But when a human woman runs out into the road and he must swerve to avoid killing her, everything goes off course. Disillusioned by his king's lack of leadership and the losses in the war against the Lessening Society, Darius finds purpose in protecting a woman he cannot make his own. Love finds a way, however, until the truth of what he is comes out and she leaves him in horror. Unbeknownst to them both, Anne is carrying his young. Uh, okay. A female who is destined to be queen, and after a tragic reunion, he vows to protect their daughter. Resigned to perpetual sadness, he is determined to serve the memory of his beloved no matter the cost. Unless by some miracle fate sees it fit 
to once again bring them together. Sounds like it would keep you quite enthralled. And these are from the website uh, New In Books. Dot com, dot com. I hope you guys are going to be having a good weekend. I hope to be doing nothing other than reading and napping. And I hope to maybe start a crochet project. We will see. Uh, this next tab is sci fi fantasy, which we looked at some on. Sorry, you're probably getting dizzy on uh, Tuesday, which is our, no, Wednesday, which is our sci-fi fantasy day, but I don't recall these. What's going on? That's okay. The more we learn about the books, the better. 500 pages, Kindle Unlimited. First in a series. There's an illustrator listed. Faye lives a dual life. Everyone knows Faye as the sickly best friend of her grace, Kyra Theonara, the last water nymph duty bound by a familial oath to protect the island country of Zafara. Only a select group of people are aware of Faye's shadow side. Trained by General Bastion to be an assassin and Kyra's secret weapon. Do you think every leader has an assassin, a personal assassin? I wonder if it comes with the job at White House. Or do you bring your own? Everything changes when Kyra is abducted, exposing Faye's cover and acting as a catalyst to Faye's own bound magic, thrusting Faye into a world she thought a fantasy. As Faye maneuvers the unfamiliar landscape of magic grappling with one obstacle after another, she tries to figure out how to save her best friend. Will she survive this new magical world? Will she rescue Kyra? Will she sacrifice herself in the process? Spark is the first book in a new adult fantasy series featuring action-packed scenes, compelling characters, and a strong heroine. 500 pages. Stone in the Sky. I know we didn't look at these. Four hundred forty-six pages, as you know, epic fantasy is. It says August 29th, no, so, so it's not really our era. We're just going to do some sharing around here. There's one in our era. And I know we didn't look at this one. The Untitled Books, copy is required, by C.J. Archer. Third in the Glass Library series. A curated collection of magic and murder. When a set of bound manuscripts written on magician-made paper is brought to the Glass Library, Sylvia and the professor send the owner away. After all, the library collects books about magic, not containing it. But the murder of the bookbinder who bound them sees the books returned to the library, along with Gabe in his role as consultant for Scotland Yard. When his investigation uncovers a link to Sylvia's past, they're even more determined to find the murderer. But they're not the only ones searching for answers. Someone has gone to great lengths to find the truth behind the binding of the books. The hunt for the killer leads them to dark corners of London and unscrupulous players with much to gain by owning the collection. It also leads to the discovery of long buried secrets and staggering revelations that shed light on Sylvia's past. I've not read this series. I've heard of the author. I think I've heard of the series, but I've just not read it. But, you know, as we get into uh, the Halloween season, books like this become more um, what you're in the mood for. 
at least me. Uh, let's see, what's this one? This is also Kindle Unlimited, fourth in The Shadowbound Queen, Court of Serpents and Secrets by Eliza Rain. Raina's secrets pale in comparison to what Nazareth has been keeping from her, and now she knows what she is. He has nothing to lose. With the balance of power tipping, both Raina and Nazareth will be forced to make choices, save each other, or stop the monsters from ruling Yggdrasil. Ig but love can turn even the sanest crazy, and if they can't save each other, they may just become the monsters that threaten the world. This, uh, <coughs> excuse me, fantasy and um, I'm thinking, and the makers of pharmaceutical products, you see, you remember, you see those commercials with names that are just absolutely bizarre. You know, they just kind of do an alphabet soup and go <laughs> and say, we're going to call it Yggdrasil <laughs> and it will help you with your psoriasis, which I can say because I have, but fantasy names and uh, medication. We don't do short, short stories. We'll get back to there, but let's go to a different, let's go to this one. Cause I know we hadn't looked at these either. Hang on, copies required. Gotta get through the day. Uh, this one's from booktipper.com and we might've, uh, been able to see these if we looked at fiction, but there was just too many when we were looking at it. So we hadn't done fiction on fiction day. This is a new Stephen King called Holly. Stephen King's Holly marks the triumphant return of beloved King character Holly Gibney. Readers have witnessed Holly's gradual transformation from a shy but also brave and ethical recluse in Mr. Mercedes to Bill Hodge's partner in Finders Keepers to a full-fledged, smart, and occasionally tough private, uh, private detective in The Outsider. In King's new novel, Holly is on her own and up against a pair of unimaginably depraved and brilliantly disguised adver adversaries. When Penny Doll calls the Finder Keepers Detective Agency, hoping for help locating her missing daughter, Holly is reluctant to accept the case. Her partner, Pete, has COVID. Her very complicated mother has just died, and Holly is meant to be on leave. But something in Penny Doll's desperate voice makes it impossible for Holly to turn her down. Near blocks from where Bonnie Doll disappeared live Professors Rodney and Emily Harris. They are the picture of bourgeois respectability. Married octogenarians devoted to each other and semi retired lifelong academics. But they are harboring an unholy secret in the basement of their well kept book lined home, one that may be related to Bonnie's disappearance. And it will prove nearly impossible to discover what they are up to. They are savvy, they are patient, and they are ruthless. Holly must summon all her formidable talents to outthink and outmaneuver the shockingly twisted professors in this new Stephen King. Except I thought I had clicked on that. I've not been to this site, so I'm still kind of learning the maneuverability of this. Oh, I just need to go down. Okay, fine. Uh, the Fraud by Zadie Smith. I've not read Zadie Smith, but no, no, the I'm aware of the author. Uh, a kaleidoscopic work of historical fiction set against the legal trial that divided Victorian England about who gets to tell their story and who gets to be believed. It is 1873. Mrs. Eliza Touche is the Scottish housekeeper and cousin by marriage of a once famous novelist, now in decline, William Ainsworth, with whom she has lived for 30 years. Mrs. Touche is a woman of many interests, literature, justice, abolitionism, class, her cousin, his wives, his life, and the next. But she is also skeptical. She suspects her cousin of having no talent his successful friend, Mr. Charles Dickens, of being a bully and a moralist, and England of being a land of facades in which nothing is quite what it seems. Andrew Bogle, meanwhile, grew up enslaved on the Hope Plantation, Jamaica. He knows every lump of sugar comes at a human cost. 
that the rich deceive the poor and that people are more easily manipulated than they realize. Mbago finds himself in London, star witness in a celebra celebrated case of imposture. He knows his future depends on telling the right story. The Tichborne trial, wherein a lower class butcher from Australia claimed he was in fact the rightful heir of a sizable estate and title, captivates Mrs. Touche and all of England. And I apologize, I, I, I'm probably pronouncing these wrong. Is Sir Roger Tichborne really who he says he is, or is he a fraud? Mrs. Touche is a woman of the world. Mrs. Bogle is no, Mr. Bogle is no fool. But in a world of hypocrisy and self-deception, deciding what is real proves a complicated task based on real historical events. The Fraud is a dazzling novel about truth and fiction, Jamaica and Britain, fraudulence and authenticity, and the mystery of other people. Not Forever, But For Now by Chuck. I've never known how to say that name. Apologize. I'm not going to try now. Uh, a hilarious horror satire about a family of professional killers responsible for the most atrocious events in history and the young brothers that are destined to take over. Meet Otto and Cecil, two brothers growing up privileged in the Welsh countryside. They enjoy watching nature shows, playing with their pet pony, impersonating their grandfather, and killing the help. Murder is the family business, after all. Downton Abbey, this is not. However, it's not so easy to continue family legacy with the constant stream of threats and distractions seemingly leaping from the hedgerow. First, there's the matter of the veritable cavalcade of escaped convicts that keep showing up at their door, not to mention the debaucherous new tutor who has a penchant for speaking in Greek and dismembering sex dolls. Then there's mummy's burgeoning opioid addiction, and who's no, who knows where daddy is? He just vanished one day after he and mummy took a walk in the so-called ghost forest. When grandfather putting with grandfather putting pressure on Otto to step up, it becomes clear that this will all end in two ways: a nuclear apocalypse or just another day among the creeping thistle and tree peonies. And in a novel written by Chuck P, either are equally possible. The September House by Clarissa Orlando. A woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it becomes a haunted nightmare in this compulsively readable, twisty, and layered debut novel. When Margaret and her husband Hal bought the large Victorian house on Hawthorne Street for sale at a surprisingly reasonable rate, they couldn't believe they finally had a home of their own. Then they discovered the hauntings. Every September, the walls drip blood. I'm out of there. The ghosts of former inhabitants appear, and all of them are terrified of something that lurks in the basement. Most people would flee. Margaret is not most people. Margaret is staying. It's her house. But after four years, Hal can't take it anymore. He leaves abruptly. Now he's not returning calls, and their daughter, Catherine, who knows nothing about the hauntings, arrives intent on looking for her missing father. To make things worse, September has just begun, and with every attempt, Margaret and Catherine make at finding Hal. The hauntings grow more harrowing because there are some secrets the house needs to keep. We did that one. Amazing Grace Adams. All the Dead Shall Weep by Charlene Harris. Following the murderous events, this is the fifth in the Gunny Rose series. As sisters Elizabeth Rose and Felicia, as well as brother Eli and Peter, are reunited in Texoma only to break apart before the Wizard's Ball held in San Diego, which will determine all their fates. Following the murderous events of the previous book, Elizabeth Rose is waiting, awaiting the arrival of her sister Felicia and her husband's younger brother Eli in Texoma. Both needed to leave the seat of the Holy Russian Empire in San Diego after Felicia's burgeoning wizardly power in death magic becomes the reason for kidnapping and assassination attempts from her mother's family of high-powered wizards in Mexico. Yeah, it happens. It must be a Tuesday. Yet bad news has traveled ahead of them as Eli is called back to San Diego, talking, taking Peter along with him, splitting them apart in more ways than one as their enemies' plans for revenge come to fruition. In this fifth installment in the beloved and best selling Gunny Rose series, etc. Um, 
with Regrets by Lee Kelly. Equal parts Big Little Lies and Bird Box, a suburban drama wrapped in a 24-hour survival story at the end of the world. Seven courses, seven guests, 24 hours that will obliterate everything. Did we get this one? I think we did. Yes, we did. All right. Let's go back to... We don't need that one anymore. Should we go back here? Let's go back here. Hello. Welcome. We are just looking at the new releases for this week in different genres. Let's look at some more of the sci-fi. Yeah, these dates. I'm not really trusting some of these dates. We've only got a couple more minutes here, so let's... Wanted to update you on what I was reading. Uh, still reading Payback and Death. I haven't been going bang gangbusters. It's been kind of a crazy week. I hope to finish that this weekend. It usually is a, a fast read for me. Uh, by J.D. Robb, 57th in series. I am also still reading um, Murder at the Royal Botanic Gardens by Andrea Penrose. This is fifth in the Wexford and Sloan series. Regency era, um, more scientific community than say um, Jane Austen territory. The beginning of the Industrial Revolution kind of thing, rather than Pride and Prejudice, which I really like. I do know H.P. Lovecraft's work. I've not read any. I don't really read the creepier kind of stuff, and that's kind of my impression of, of what he is. Um, but we are out of time. Time always goes so fast. I appreciate everybody who uh, tunes in very much so. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. You know the drill. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing reading sprints uh, for the last of the week at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And we'll go for four hours, maybe five. You never know. Bring your own book. If you want to work on a project, I might. I really want to work on a project. I, I need the time to, to do that. But, you know, I still have the J.D. Rob, so we'll see what happens. Um, and uh, if you want to even meditate, take a nap. We listen to ambient music, and it's just nice, quiet movement. We, we, uh, music, we check in at the top of the hour, see how you're doing. So it's a nice, nice... Uh, way to just carve out time for yourself. I hope you have a very good Friday. I hope you have a very good weekend. Uh, if you're doing fun things, share it in the comments. If you're doing nothing like I am as much as possible, share that in the comments too. I hope uh, to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching today. God bless.